We welcome our listeners to the Friendly Cross European podcast. I'm Carolina from Finland and joining me is Marion from France. We are the Outspoken too, and we invite you to be your authentic self. This is the second episode of our series and we are going to talk about job hunting and other workplace shenanigans. Welcome and let's go! <music> Let's go. Um, so, Carolina, we are going to talk about a bit of our work experience because both of us uh, are working or had work in previous times. We both were student workers as well. And we want to talk a bit about uh, the our country laws and everything that goes with it, the difference between Finland and France. So, Carolina, just tell me what it was your first experience of work. My first job was at the age of 30. In Finland, we have this summer job that are like trials of work that last for two weeks. And I was at an assembly line at a factory. And I did that till I was able to get my first real job as a telemarketer. How about you? I started working when I was, I think, 14 or 15, something like that. Uh, my parents and other parents, friends of theirs, uh, wanted me to be tutoring children. So I started tutoring. And then I had uh, my best friend uh, her father was uh, starting a new company and he needed someone to stick stickers on packages. So I did that. Uh, I made quite a lot of money uh, because I was paid eight cents on every packages that I made. And I was doing a lot of them. <laughs> and I did also some cooking because he was doing like a cooking thing. And uh, so that was the stickers and we gave him our family recipes. So we worked, I think, for like four weekends with my mother and my sister. We were going to uh, like an industrial kitchen to like bake cookies, <laughs> traditional Alsatian cookies. So I baked, I think, with my parents, with my mother. Uh, 100 kilos in four weekends so we could show the guy who will actually make them on the long term how to to make them because it's a traditional like cooking stuff that it's passed from generation to generation in my family so it's not like really in the books or even if you have like the recipe the recipe just says the ingredients not how to make them <laughs> Aha, uh -huh, I see. Then, yeah, mostly I did that kind of work, tutoring and this, until I was like 18. Then I, I, oh yeah, I did babysitting as well, like most children do. But it was like not really a work where I was like having uh, a boss and everything like what she experienced. I started really working when I was... 19. Yeah, my summer of my 19th uh, birthday, I started to work on... I was doing flowers. <laughs> I was making bouquets. <laughs> uh, um, because the... Yeah, the supermarket uh, has uh, like a flower aisle and they needed people to make the bouquets. So I did that for three weeks, I think. And then I was let go because I had some health issues and they didn't want to deal with that. I was supposed to like work all year around, like do the summer full time and then work eight hours a week doing my, my university time. But I had uh, uh, issues with my uh, wrists. So I, I had difficulties making the bouquets and I have problem with my knees. So I couldn't stand uh, up for eight hours on end. 
So he said, I cannot have someone in the front of my uh, supermarket that sits down and has like a cast on her wrist. So just goodbye. Don't ever come back. No, oh, this is so ridiculous. Like, um, also in Finland, we have many of these jobs that are like, you have to stand, even though you don't actually have to stand for the job. But it looks like you are more alert, like uh, it gives a better image of the workplace when you are not sitting, but it would be so much better to sit. Yeah, and I was like on a behind a high bar. So you can couldn't really see that I was sitting. Like I wasn't like sitting, sitting. I was in a high chair and just not putting on my all my weight on my knees all day. That's all I was doing. I'm I'm pretty sure the customer couldn't see that I was sitting actually. So I was like pissed because I wanted to work. And I don't understand because most people nowadays say that people don't want to work. They don't want to make the efforts. They don't want like the hours. They want to just uh, do as little as they possibly can. And that wasn't me. I was working with both knees and a wrist, not working on my feet all day, doing work with my hand where I had uh, like, I needed surgery <laughs> for that hand. I had surgery years later for that because I didn't treat it because I wanted to work and I didn't want to be like fully compromised. And I I was always on time. I, I did my job well, mm. but I was let go because of my health and I was mad. I was really mad at it and I'm still mad at it because it wasn't fair. I wanted to work. I never complained. I just said I need that to be able to work. And they didn't want it. They didn't want me. They wanted to have like the easy way out and just say, we'll get someone who's able and not something, someone is broken. And I'm like, and, and then there are people who said that, yeah, there's many jobs that are not uh, finding someone, but when someone wants to work, we don't keep them if there is anything wrong with them. I remember when I started like doing interviews, my parents said, don't ever mention your health because they're not going to take you. They're not going to take you if they know. I think that's important uh, info. This is part of me. Like they will have to deal with this thing and I'm not disabled enough to like get money from the government and not work. But I'm disabled enough that companies don't want me. Oh, that's a shitty spot. <laughs> yeah, so I don't tell them. And then I work through the pain. And and I hope that I can like stay long enough for them to not be able to throw me away like shit. <laughs> yeah, you have this trial period, right? In the beginning or when you start a job. Yeah. How long is that in France? It depends uh, on the contract that you sign and on the category that you are. If you're like just a worker, it's two months. It can be less, but the max is two months and you can make, you can double it. Every trial in France can be doubled. So I don't understand why we cannot, cannot just say the fall month is the maximum. <laughs> Uh, when you have a white collar job, it's uh, three months and you can double it. Like if you have a, no, it's not a white collar job, actually. It's more like a skilled job and the white collar job, then you get four months and you can double it to eight, but it's, it cannot be more than that. In my category, category of work, I get the three months that can be doubled. I find that very interesting. In Finland, it's either six months or three months. And I'm not sure if there are any laws like deciding which one it is, but usually it's three months. Like uh, I have only seen a couple of like jobs that the trial is six months. I think it's a bit, it's a bit hard, six months or eight months. That's the maximum you can have. Because 
in between this six months or eight months, you can be let go for any reason without any uh, any obje- objection. You cannot say anything. There's They don't have to justify it. They can say, sorry, don't come back tomorrow. And that's it. Actually, I've looked at the laws. If you have been in the workplace like for two months or something like that, you have like a one month period. But still, you know, and uh, you don't have any procedures to make and everything. You just can be let go and you have to find a work on short notice and everything. So it can be hard, I think. It's a bit much. I actually have a very good story about this. Um, I have been once terminated in the trial period. It was my actually like my first real job with full time hours at the ripe age of 29. Uh, Before 29, I have always been studying or working part time. I have been on a sick leave many times. So Um, And I have been working through like temp agencies. So um, this is also, I'm I'm not sure if you have this in France, but uh, let's get to those in in a second. I will tell you the story of the restaurant I was working at letting me go. Uh, They originally searched for someone to work part time with them. And uh, I had an interview with them and they wanted me to start working there. They had um, two cooks and uh, one waitress and the owner and the owner's wife working at this restaurant. And uh, they decided to hire me on full time hours. I was very excited. And uh, in less than a month, I was searching for a new job. The owner was very strict, harsh. He would lose his temper for the smallest things like um, once me and the other waitress were being yelled at because the napkins behind the counter were not arranged according to his standards. It's no one sees the behind the counter. When he was stressed, he, he became a very unpleasant person. Uh, the cooks changed all the time. They have hard time keeping people there. And uh, They let me go because I made too many suggestions. What I wanted uh, was a bio waste in a restaurant, which they didn't have. Everyone else in this restaurant was okay with recycling, but the owners, and they are the ones who decide. Then the owner was very mad at me. And the other thing, I actually started Uh, metals recycling and in Finland I couldn't um, resign myself because uh, if I leave the job I'm not getting unemployment benefits. Uh, When my three months were almost up the owner tells me that I'm going to be terminated. I was so happy. He told me that I'm let go because of my personality and because I'm, I'm like putting my nose into things that don't belong to me. I like to think that I was let go because I wanted to start a bio waste. <laughs> yeah, I had this, it was an internship that I had to have to have a diploma. I was working to get a diploma to be able to keep children, you know, like going on vacation with children and stuff like that. I had to have like an internship and I was selected uh, to do it in my town and everything was going great. And then everything went south uh, because we had like hours of and hours of pre-working on the summer. So every day was scheduled and we could buy all the equipments to make all the art and all the craft things that we could make that then. And we had to plan if we needed to like rent a bus to go to the sea or everything like that. And I was working great doing my my thing. And I had like uh, this girl who was supposed to teach me how to do it. And she was not. (laughs) 
I did all of, all of work because she was not feeling it and she didn't like the theme that we chosen. So she was not really working on it. There were two girls who were like the director, one for the July and one for August. I didn't know that at the time, but there were an opening for a full-time position all year around at this city. They were competing to the po for the position of full-year director. I got caught in the middle because one girl was telling me, no, you cannot do things like that. And then the second one was like, no, 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 it's not like that. And I had to change everything all the time just because there were trying to be the best so they got uh, the position so at some point i was like can you please just try to figure out something and not make me start again like nine times because i was doing the same stuff and going back and forth and back and forth on the same ideas and i was like please just get over yourself just pick something and leave me the hell out of it It was my first like real job with a boss. I didn't know how to handle myself. I didn't say it right. But I was like, okay, that's fair. I didn't say it right. But I'm in an internship. Just tell me that the way I spoke wasn't great. Don't send me a letter telling me that I have an interview with the, the director of human resources for just saying that Can they, can they get this shit together? So I was like really scared and everything. And then I kept to myself and I work like hours and hours on this. And then we had like a final reunion to say, okay, uh, so this is it, it's closed. And then the girl who was supposed to work that didn't work just started crying and telling everyone that she didn't like the theme. So we had to change everything. Oh, oh, that pains me. I got mad because I did all her work and she didn't like it. And I was like, could you tell it in the beginning or maybe? Not after like 10 or 12 hours of work, you know? Mm, yeah, yeah. Wasting everyone's time. Yeah, so I got a bit mad and they, they went around the table to see if people were okay with it. And I said, no, I worked really hard on it. I don't see why we have to change everything for one person. And they didn't like it. But they were making rounds to know what people felt. But I wasn't allowed to actually tell the truth. So I got a convocation to actually terminate my post. My parents were outraged and They, they got me union help because we didn't knew anything. Like it was my first job and it's like the city thing. So we didn't knew anything about it. So we felt it was unfair. So I had like interviews because you have to have two interviews before you fired in France. I was alone with them and it didn't go great. And the second one, there were the union worker. And she felt that, that it wasn't fair, but still, I was fired. And I, I felt that was because I dared to speak my mind when I was asked to speak my mind. Oh, how dare you? <laughs> yeah, and they started to say that I would never get be good enough to be with a child, that I was a horrible person. They were really, really unfair and like hurtful for. Like I was 18. It was my first job, real job with like, like, uh, with a director and everything. And I was like, you're unfair and you're too harsh for 18 years old. And they said like, they would make everything in their power possible. So I don't get my diploma. <gasps> oh, that sucks. They were going to like call the, the, the school and everything. So I got, don't get the diploma. And I was like, this is insane. You say that I'm not capable of taking care of children when you never saw me with an actual child. Thankfully, the union worker, she knew uh, other people that could take me in for my internship at last minute because I needed to make it on the summer. 
because it's like an extra diploma that you can pass. It's not like something that you do in school. I went to this thing and it was like run by police and it was insane, but it was the greatest internship I, I have ever done. So yeah, I, I was really mad at it, but you know, I was 18 and I think I don't really think it was my fault. They were too harsh. Maybe I made some mistakes and I wasn't speaking quite right, but I don't think you fire someone for speaking their mind when you asked them to. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I have had problems with this as well, but that's a a story for another time because we have actually a lot of things to compare between our two countries. Um, So we said that we are going to talk about unemployment and you talk a little bit how people have this prejudice that others don't want to work. So how do others see unemployed people in France? Most of the people who see like unemployed people say that they're just lazy, they just want the benefits, they they just don't want to work. Everyone says there's a lot of work available, but it's too hard for people. They don't want to to get the trouble of actually working. But I have the numbers, I've looked for them. In France, we have 3.5 million per person one without any employment and two millions who have uh, a bit of activity but not enough to sustain themselves so five million people most more than five million people are without steady jobs from 32 million or how many are there in france oh we are 70 millions 70 oh i was off yeah, 70. Yeah, well, a lot. <laughs> and there they are. <laughs> Sorry, it's funny because there is not enough jobs for everyone. So we have 200,000 <laughs> 200, jobs that are available right now. So it's not enough for everyone. So people are just not saying the right thing when they say that there there is work they just have to do it that's not true there's not enough jobs for everyone and the fact is when you are asking people they say you don't care if the work is uh, horrible and you get an horrible pay it's okay you just have to work and i'm like but where is the human in it work is not the final thing you know it's we are not born to work that's not true uh, i saw so, so many people say work is life life is work yeah. and in many countries like you have to work or you're no one but i don't think it's fair or good because we are not our work and i think if you ask someone to do a shitty job and you pay them a shitty pay that's okay for them to say no yeah and i don't think we should judge people for having value in themselves yeah exactly in finland the social security is very good so if you have history of working you get a percentage of your salary at the moment i'm getting 77 percent of my salary And uh, this is a lot of money because we get on top of this, we get housing allowance. And uh, the the thing is, of course, I don't want to go back to telemarketing or some other job just to have a job. I want to have a job that supports me and I find it interesting. And in Finland, the unemployment rate before the coronavirus was between 6 and 7%. And now it's 82 after the coronavirus. And I actually don't trust these numbers. Because in 2019, the government decided that you are not listed unemployed if you are working one hour a week. So... It's the same, like you said, in France, that there are millions of people who are working, but they are not working enough 
to support themselves. It's um, a play with statistics, actually. So we don't know how many people in Finland are actually unemployed or working only part time and still getting the government assistance like myself. I'm considered a working person if I have more than one hour a week. Yeah, and in France, they they did uh, they changed a lot about unemployment recently. Actually, in two thousand and nineteen, before to get unemployment benefits, you had to work six hundred and ten hours over a twenty eight month period, and you get like twelve twelve euros a day plus forty percent of your daily salaries. That's what you get. So much less than what you are getting. And now the the money doesn't change. But you have to work 910 hours over 24 months. You have to work 300 hours more with four months less, less that, than what you used to do. They always did that, but they're now getting more... They're doing it more. They kick out people from unemployment. So they don't have to pay them anymore. And they don't count when you count count unemployment people. Uh, because in France, there is a law saying that if you refuse free offers of employment, you get kicked out of unemployment. But sometimes it's like you have to travel a uh, hundred kilometers a day to get to this work. And if you say no, it's on you. And you were the bad guy for saying that you don't want to work a hundred kilometers away from your home. Or you are like a doctor and they say, okay, now you can go clean. And you say, but that's not my profession. And they say, yes, but you can do it. So if you don't want to do it, you're kicked out of the program. So it's insane. They say it's supposed to be reasonable offerings, but it's not actually reasonable. And many people get kicked out because they missed supposed interviews that actually never happened. So there is a lot of of problems. And actually we had like a guy who was fired from the unemployment services because it was actually helping people and they didn't like it because it was actually doing the job right and telling them to get as much money as they were allowed to get, like receiving the money that the law said they were owed. And because he was helping people, he was fired. Oh, that sounds horrible. We have actually similar pro problems here in Finland. We actually have two things that are happening. We have had this same like uh, unemployment benefits being cut. Like I simplified when I said that I get the 77%. That's because I belong to an, an union. We have union uh, unemployment benefits and then we have like the government unemployment benefits. And the government unemployment benefits are always the same. It doesn't matter how much you earned, you will be getting the basic income. And in the union, that's where your salary matters. And they are cutting the months you can, you are allowed to get this union money. Like, uh, I think it started with two years. You have to work six months, at least 18 hours a week. And then you have two years of higher unemployment benefits. But they are cutting this amount all the time. I think now it's less than one year and a half. Because of the coronavirus, they actually made it, um, you don't have to work six months to get this better money. And at the same time, uh, be before 2019, I think, if you were getting um, this basic income, if you earned any money from a part-time job, it was deducted from your basic income. And why would you go to work if every cent is deducted from the unemployment benefits. We have the same thing. Really? They first changed it so that you are allowed to earn 300 euros more. 
and now we can earn 500 euros more a month and that nothing gets cut from your benefits and that's a very good system because you want to go to work because um with the 300 euros when i was working part-time after the 300 euros i earned my housing allowance came down my um, salary was cut in half because every euro i earned deducted half a euro from my benefits so at the end of the month when i calculated my hourly wage it came down to two euros 60 cents because it was the work was cutting so much of my benefits that i was only getting two out two euros from my work and why would you like to work it doesn't matter how much you like to work it's if you're get, getting two euros that's not enough not in finland yeah actually uh in my current work i had like an internship to do before and i was paid uh, on unemployment benefits like it's a working relationship between unemployment benefits workers and and uh, the company that i'm in right now so i had like two and a half months where i was paid by the unemployment benefits but i worked full-time by this company and i had like uh, an internship wage like it's 600 euros and i was getting like 400 or 500 from the from the government of unemployment benefits and actually had uh, I used to do some work for uh, an association uh, where I was like giving formation to people and I used to I I got like paid for that and then I looked if I had to deduct it from my money that I was getting from the unemployment benefits and yes and the funny thing is it's not the money you actually get that you have to deduct it's the money that it's paid in full, like before the tax and everything that it's taking from the government when you work, you know, because the, um, the, your, the, the, the person that is employing you is paying like uh, for your social security and your retirement and everything like that. And you have to de deduct the money before that. So I was actually losing money if i was like getting a hundred euros i had to deduct 150 euros from my pay so i was losing money by making money no so i was like sorry i cannot work because i'm actually losing money by working it's insane i don't think it's fair to if i want to work more i get to take back the 400 euros i was getting that wasn't enough to live by any standards, especially because I live near Paris. So no way I can do anything with that kind of money. So, and they wanted to take more than I was making. <laughs> if I wanted to work like on the side to actually help, <laughs> actually help an association by making formations. <laughs> and I'm, I was like, it's insane. I'm sorry, but I have to refuse to help you because there was no one else to make the formations. There was no one to teach. I was their only recourse. And I was like, I'm so, so sorry. I cannot because it's going to kill me if I do it. I will lose money by working. So yeah, I had to not work, even though I was, I was one, I wanted to work and they needed me badly. And I couldn't because I would actually lose too much money. I couldn't support myself anymore if I did it. So I think this kind of laws, they don't, ma they don't make it so people want to work. And actually, when you ha are out of the unemployment benefits in France, you get a bit of money and it's called the RSA. And it's 550 euros a month. It's not much. But if you work, they take it out of that. If you work even a little bit, they take it out. 
So you don't want to work. You're not making enough money already. And they're going to take that back bef before you can start to earn anything more than that. So I think it's not fair. And it's insane to do that. And in France, people know that you cannot live with 550 euros per month. That's not enough. Even with the like the minimum salary in France, that is, you get something like a thousand and and two hundred euros per month. People know that's kind of hard to live with that, <laughs> and that's not even half. <laughs> so yeah, I think it's it's kind of insane that we are, as a society, that we don't want to help people because. They're doing nothing and we keep them there without helping them. And that's not doing anything to, to everyone. But in France, we have a president that actually thinks that trickle-down economics is a thing. Like if you give money to rich people, it's gonna rain down on the poor people. Um, that's not true. That's never been true. But still, we work in France like it's true. It's never gonna be true, but we have um, he ran on the idea that he was in the center, that he wasn't really a, like he wasn't like the left or the right, that he was better, that he was more progressist, that he was gonna help people, and now we can see that it's not true. It's not true, and many people are in the streets saying just go out we don't want you anymore you lied and we had this movement that was called gilet jaune and because they wanted to tax tax the gas that we put in your car more and people were like you only taking money out of the poor because the rich person doesn't care if the gas is a hundred is a, a euro and fifty cents or two euros they don't care but the poor people it's gonna ruin their life because mm, they don't have anything to squeeze the cents from yeah they are already poor they don't have any thing left like we have right now like food banks for people working like especially for them because they cannot sustain living anymore we have homeless people that are working full-time jobs but cannot pay for a rent so people went out in the streets telling him that he was insane and because also he wanted to tax the poor but he cut one of our taxes that only apply to the rich we have we had a tax like like if you had i think you have to have more than one million in like in your bank accounts and on your like properties and everything if you had more than a million you had a special tax to pay and then he said okay we'll stop doing that and it's only if you have a million in properties so many many people got kicked out of that and yeah and we have we have also a program where if you come back to France with your money that you sheltered in another country and you say, sorry, I shouldn't have done that, you don't have to pay what you stole to the country. Oh, we have, we passed the same law in Finland, actually, as well. Like, you don't have to pay taxes when you take the money home from your secret bank accounts. Yeah, and I think it's not great and people are just fed up to everything that has been done to rich people and nothing has been done to poor people. And we have this stigmatization saying that if you're poor is because you work not in, you don't work enough, that you don't try hard enough, that you are spending money on a TV and everything like that. And I think some people are, and some people are actually playing the system and getting money that they shouldn't get but they actually made the math and at some point sorry maybe my math my numbers are not correct anymore uh, at some point we had like 10 millions that was going to people that didn't need it or that lied 
on social benefits, but it was 80 billions, billions with a B, going to tax fraud. Okay, that's a lot of money already. Yeah, and we spend a lot of money trying to get back to these 10 millions, but not a lot of money to get to the 80 billions. So yeah, people are mad. <laughs> yeah, and of course, I actually know people from real life that they are never going to work. They don't want to work. I think that because of these people, we shouldn't punish everyone who is not working because most people would work if they were able to at least a little bit. That's what I want to think in my own fantasy land, maybe, because it doesn't help if we force these people who don't want to work to work. They are not going to do the job well. They are not going to be motivated to do it. They don't want to be there. So why take the job and force someone who is unwilling to do it and not give it to someone who actually wants to do this job? And I think we actually have done a lot of good things in Finland in the past um, less than 10 years to help on top of this social security so that it's easier to work part-time because you still get the social security so you can get by better and it's easier to take up temporary jobs because you are not going to ruin your bank account by taking these jobs. Is there something else? Oh yeah, uh, we have a couple of minutes left so I would like to talk about different contract types in France because we when we started this podcast, uh, we actually talked about uh, zero hours and em employment, which we have in Finland. So you basically have a contract that you are going to be called whenever needed. And I have had countless jobs with this uh, contract. It's the best for the employer because they are going to pay for you only when they need you and uh, they are going to ask you to come to work with an hour's notice or something because they just ask you to come when it's very busy. It's very good for the company, not so much for the worker. But you don't have this in France. No, you, we don't have this. Uh, we have like a few types of contracts, but the two major ones are CDE. That's an unlimited contract. There is no end to it. And uh, CDD, that is limited contract. There is an end date to it. And that's most of our um, contracts. Because even our like people who go to temp work there in CDD and everything like that. I think they were actually talked about getting the zero hour contract, but people were like, I cannot work another work another in another place if I can be available that minute's notice. So I have to do only that and it's not enough to like sustain life. As I said, like the full time work is barely enough to live already. So that's not good if you don't have that. And so, yeah, you have the full time, the, the full time or the part time doesn't matter for CDE, CDD. And when you are in CDE, so the unlimited kind, there is no end date. It's very difficult to get rid of you <laughs> if they want to fire you after the trial period. And with CDD, the limited kind, it's even harder to get rid of you before the date. Oh. Yeah, because you have an end date already. If you want to get rid of someone before, you have to like be very careful because most of the time you have to pay them the entire contract anyway. So <laughs> you should keep them. And if you don't offer them another work after that, you have to pay them like a bonus because it's not very steady job. It's not a very steady job to do like this limited kind of work. So you have to pay something at the end for the non-stability. 
Okay, that's interesting. Uh, we are paying through these temp agencies, they are paying the holidays on top of the salary. I'm not sure how many, is it 6% of top, on top of the salary or something like this? And that's the, your compensation for taking up uncertain job. On top of this, we are now in the past, well, five years, I have learned this, that we are using like entrepreneurs as workers. You have to set up your own company or we have these separate companies that are uh, representing you and you are selling your hours. But because you are an entrepreneur, you usually have a set zero amount for your hours and then you don't get the uh, added benefits of a, a worker like uh, the like um, what is it like uh, for the evening usually in Finland if you work after six o'clock you get a certain percentage on top of your salary and the same if you work night shift and stuff like that so they are just working you and they don't give you these benefits because you are an entrepreneur I know that this is used in cleaning and in hospice and in restaurants and in a lot of places. This is again very good for the, the company and not so good for the worker. Yeah, I think it's, we have the same thing with Uber, you know, Uber. Yes. You know the company and every like food delivery and almost taxis. <laughs> yes, the same, but it can be applied in anything in Finland. Yeah. and. I think they try to do that in everything here, but because it's so hard, many bosses are crying for help because they want to hire people, but they pay so much to the government before we they pay you. I think they have to pay like twice what we are given. They give almost 50% to the government on every worker. And then you also have to pay taxes on the benefits that you make. So the, it's a lot of taxes and many, many employers are mad at how much we charge for pers for each person. Yeah. So there's a lot of things to un untangle for our society to try and help the poorest and the workers and to make it worthwhile to actually work. and. Uh, yeah, is there anything else to add from your side? I think we'll need to make another episode on this because I have so much work, sorry. Yeah, it sounds like this is not finished. <laughs> yeah, we have so much. I, I know both of us have so much work stories because we, we talked only about the work, but there is the work environment that we live in. And there is a lot of stuff that happened to, to me, actually, because in France, we have a lot of problems with like sexism and workplace harassment and everything like that. So I have a lot of story about that. Yeah, this is unfamiliar for me. I have lived in a very peaceful land of Finland. <laughs> I think we'll put this with uh, an, an, the episode that we'll make on sexual harassment, because it's really different. We talked about this before in between Finland and France, because we are subjected to a lot of it in France. And from what you said in Finland, you're not that subjected to it. So I think it's very, it's very interesting to see the differences because I'm afraid to go out. <laughs> and I don't think you, you live this. Yeah. And I've never had this. And I have so like nice stories about this as well. So I, I, that's a good um, podcast idea. I think this is the first. Yeah, this was the first episode of the job and workplace shenanigans. We with these words, we invite you to follow us on social media. You can find us on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube and Facebook. You can find us on any podcast platform. If you have any questions or something you would like us to address, you can email us at theoutspoken2 at gmail.com. 
Thank you. And we'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye bye. In the next episode. And his dad started to comment because I was wearing lipstick. Mm, naughty. And he started to say, if you're wearing lipstick, it's because you want to put a ring around my... No! No! You can imagine the words. 